city where things are beginning to unveil and we don't know where to go again. We don't even know to balance our faith now. We are finding it difficult and all. I think uh, we will be discussing some few scriptures here, very few, but targeting on something understanding who to believe at this point in time. But before we do all that, I want us to pray. In the name of our Lord, Yehushua Amasha, I thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your wonders. Thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for the good things you'll be doing in our life. Thank you for your mercy and grace upon our life. I appreciate you for this very thing that you've given to us. Not that we merited it, not that we are qualified for it, just because of your love. You gave us access to it, to become the redeemed of Christ. We appreciate you, Lord God. Father, teach us your word and help us to, 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 to stay put in your word. In Christ Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, praise God. Viewers all over the world, I think uh, the time is come that we, we begin to follow, follow the doctrines of Christ and uh, trace the messages of the first apostles that once reigned. Let us begin to trace them to balance our focus and our future and to help our decision in life. This is not the time for us to just keep on living without direction, without, uh, without uh, how do I say it now, a, a, a focus. And if you are also having a focus, who are you having the focus on? Is it God? And if it is God, which of this God? Is it the creator of the heavens and the earth? Because we have different gods. We have the God of of the sea, we have the God of the sun, we have the God of the moon, we have the God of the forest, we have the God of the rock. You see the subject there, and all these gods are subject to those things that I'm measuring now. The word of in English makes you to be subject to, just like we say, the son of God. That means the son is subject to God. The son of the president. That means subject to the president. You can't say the president of the son. No. It is the subject that takes the off. So now when we say uh, the, the God of, the God of, we are simply saying one who is operating in the realm of that thing that is existing already. A spirit that is operating with that thing that is already existing. So we should not call them God, but because of ignorance, sometimes the God that sometimes we don't just we 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 because when you have understanding, you will not overlook. It is when you don't have understanding, you say, Okay, let me and their evil targets. They pretend to become Christians that they might be able to enter into the sheepfold. Lies our faith. And destroy our life with God, our relationship with God, our our there shall be holiness. One seventeen. Now, are you there now? Obadiah one seventeen. Are we there? He said, "But upon Mount Zion, Obadiah one seventeen. Are we there?" He said, "Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession." There is something I want to open for you today. Why is this scripture here? Is it that, I want you to listen carefully. Is it that when you are not delivered, you cannot prosper? This is the question. Is it that when you are not delivered, you cannot become, you cannot buy a car, you cannot have a house, you cannot become president? If your answer is no, not because I'm not delivered, I cannot buy a car, you will understand that the deliverance God is talking about is different. 
Because we have so, have so many idiots out there who are president, who have opportunity in the government set, uh, set, uh, circle. We have so many there who have opportunity to become uh, uh, managers in bastions. So how can you come up and say, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. That means not until there is deliverance. The house of Jacob cannot be saying, what is this scripture really tied to? Why must there be deliverance before holiness, before inheritance? That is what the scripture is saying now. Why? What does this mean? Hallelujah. Praise God. I think uh, the time has come we, we begin to understand what the scripture is trying to tell us, what it's trying to, to, to open to us. Amen. As a Christian, when you call yourself a Christian, when you are dedicated to God, when you are open to God, when you submit yourself to God, you like it or not. When you get to a great height, you become one of these persons who will rebel God. And you claim to become a genuine Christian. You must give room for deliverance. The spirit will be calm until you have a position to dominate, to rule. That is when the spirit comes up. Until you've gotten a, you've gotten a grant that uh, thousands are hearing you. Until you've gotten a grant that, yes, hundreds are under you. Until you become a captain of, then the spirit will come up. Why? Because he knows you have people to mislead. I want you to understand it. Because he already knows now you have a huge number of souls to mislead, then that spirit will react. It will be humble until the time you've gathered a huge number who believe in you. It will make you to be humble until the time you've gathered a huge number of people who believe in you, who can die for your sake. Then the spirit will wake up and say, this is who I am. The Lucifer spirit, we call it Luciferian spirits. It's the Lucifer spirit that has been that you did not let go. So you must give room to deliverance. You must create room for deliverance. When you are too big for it, you are too big for God. Any man who is too big for deliverance will soon grow to become too big for God to control. Obadiah 117. He said, Upon Mount Zion, meaning as you come in into God, give yourself to deliverance. Then you become holy. Then God can trust you to entrust things into you. They have their own teaching. That is why Jesus said in his book, John 13, if you understand, in, in, in the book of Luke, John, sorry, in the book of John, I mean, Jesus said something. In the book of John 10.10, 10, he said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. See, he said, he come, the thief, the thief, the thief. He didn't say the devil. Excuse me. He didn't say the devil. He said the thief. Who is the thief? These teachers. Why? Because they're sneaking. They warm their way in. They did not come directly. They come in pretense. They came in in pretense. They are not Christians, but they claim to become Christians. Hallelujah. You can call for prayers. You can call for questions and all. Viewers all over the world, as you are watching right now, anything you see that is not clear to you, you can just call and let me kind of revise it again because we are here to discuss the Bible. This is what I'm just trying to tell you right now. Remember I told you, Abudaya 117, it says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. And these are the same pastors, these are the same teachers, these are the same bishops who condemn deliverance. They are the same people who condemn deliverance. Why should there, should there be deliverance? Why? They know if one is delivered, then is holy. But to perfect 
the faith of one. He said, no need of deliverance. Why must you rub yourself on the ground? Deliverance is not rubbing self on the ground. Deliverance is what? Giving yourself to the Holy Spirit to occupy you completely and putting away the evil spirit that used you to misbehave, walk against God, walk against the doctrines of Christ. That is what deliverance is all about. First, they've crushed deliverance. Why? Because of their mission. They've crushed deliverance. Ah, why should you accept deliverance? What is deliverance? All these are just formalities. Let's, let, let's, let's come on. We are bigger than this. We are this. We are that. We are this. No, I said it to you. I'm putting it to you today. Deliverance is needed in a church. For upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be difference. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be washing. In Betru, there must be a washing. In the market, there must be a, a, a selling and a buying. There must be one who is trading, there must be one who is buying. You see it? So, why must you turn? If it's a law that in every market square, there are people who are trading and there are people who are buying, then what about the church? There are people who are to be delivered and there are people who can deliver them. But they've crushed that to begin their mission. The first thing they, at, they targeted in the church is deliverance. And they brought in philosophy. They brought in, there are 10 principles to become a rich man. Then they bring in business to the altar of God. I am not against business. I love business. I love people who do business. It, no matter the kind of business that you do, provided you are not robbing somebody, you are not lying against somebody, business is good. But should business be on the altar of God? No. But today, see this, so many seminars in the church of God on business, not on Christ. Not on Jesus Christ. Say, what is deliverance? What is deliverance? Go through these principles. You make it in life. Am I against business? No. Let us do business outside. That was why Jesus, he took the rod and destroyed all the things they were making, making money with there. He destroyed the pigeons. He destroyed the cage. And all the, all the sheep, he pushed them out. Say, for this is my father's house. It should not be used for business center. The church is beginning to turn a business center. Let's go back to our first law. Let's go back to our first law. You see, I want to read that place again. He said, I'm reading from Jude, verse 4. I say this, because some godless teachers have warmed their way in among you, saying that after we, and, hey, this place is tough, after we became Christians, we can do just as we like. This is the place that, it, whenever I read this place, I say, oh God. After we become Christians, you see it? You see, after we be, see, I, I want you to see it. After we become Christians, after we become, after we become, many first they will become Christians first. Their first mission is to be Christians. That if they will do what they are like, meaning they are not genuine. They are not true Christians. They are just what? Wolf in a sheep clothing. Because they agree that they need to become Christian first. They know they are wolf. But let us assume, let us pretend to become what? Sheep. We know we are wolf. But let us put on what? The garment of sheep. Let us put on the skin of a sheep. But we know. Let us pretend to be Christians. But we know we are devils. That's what they are saying here. 
After they become Christians, he said, after we, be, after we become Christians, we will do what we like. Hey. I think I will open my mouth this time. After I become the Pope, I will do what I like. I want you to get it now. After I become a Pope, see, he, he spent many years, nobody knew about him. Pretending to be holy. I, I want you to get it. That is what the scripture is saying now. Pretending to be holy. Keeping himself for a great day. Keeping himself because of a position he desired. That is why, how do you know the devil? They are this one who pursue position. They are this one who pursue the height of anything. Community, they pursue the, 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 uh, the, the big office there. Anywhere they are, they want to be at the top. That they might be able to command and rule over others. They may be able to control the attire. They may be able to push people by authority. Not by reality. Not by truth anymore. Because they know that they don't have the truth. They know we know the truth. So what they do to us is that first they pretend to climb to the top mountain. When they get to the top mountain, they've taken the key of authority. Then they subject us. They rule us. They no longer lead us because they don't have what it takes to lead. They rule because they have the power in their hand. The difference between ruling and leading. Because we lead by truth. We rule by power. You see? That's what the scripture is saying. By truth we lead. But by power we rule. And now, if you watch the world right now, the people that are in power, they are the ones ruling right now. Both in politics and in religion. You see? After they've gotten the office, after they've entered that position, where no man can dictate for them, but they be the one to dictate for you, then they will come up with their old spirit, the old man in them. Which they were supposed to pull down while they became Christians. They were supposed to pull that spirit down. The Adamic nature down, which was under the Evangelists today, they are turning us to now. That is why I said, don't look unto me. Look unto Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. Hebrews 12, 2. Don't look unto me. I don't have what it takes to sustain your faith. No. It is the word of God that can keep your faith. For the word of God is the truth. And faith is the glory of the truth. The faith of every man is the glory of the truth that we have. So, truth radiates what? Faith. The radiation of truth is faith. You must understand this. You need faith to live at this point in time. By what? Who came with the Holy Spirit? Joining yourself to the Holy Spirit. Allow him to lead you and to direct your path. For no man can give you this truth except the Holy Spirit. That is why the Bible calls it in spirit and in truth. Not in the truth and spirit, no. 
You cannot function in truth when you don't have the spirit. It is when you have the spirit, then the spirit leads you to the truth. It is the spirit that leads men to truth. So you need the spirit of God to function in truth. Hallelujah. Look at what the scripture is saying. For how long are we going to remain like this? Looking at the people on top. Don't look at the people on top. Look at God and look at the word of God. Use the word of God to see God. For men can no longer demonstrate the God we, we, we know or we are looking for. Men are collapsing from their standard. Men have ruptured their faith as a result of earthly things. So men, because of title and healing, trying to preserve the height that you are, you compromise your faith. So why should I look unto you anymore? Let's look unto Jesus. Let the word of God guide us and let the spirit of God lead us. That is what we need now. You need God now. You need God by joining yourself to Jesus and accepting the leading of the Spirit. Join yourself to Jesus and accept the leading of the Spirit by observing, following the word of God. I tell you, you will not miss out. Let nobody be your hero anymore. Let nobody be your hero except Jesus. Let nobody be your hero except Jesus. Let me tell you, it is Jesus who said in my name, no other name can function you, no other name can make you except the name Jesus, Yehushua Amasha. Any other name outside this, somebody deceiving somebody. Please, I want you to understand that they choose, see, they know what they are saying. They said, see, see, they came in. They, see, he said, say, 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 after they, after we have come in, meaning it's a plan. It's a plan. After we have come in, meaning we need to come in first. But when we come, let us be in a disguise. Let us pretend as if we are Christians because we have a target. And what is the target? To go and tell them that what they know is not true. To go and destroy their faith for them. That was why, remember what I told you just now, John 10, 10. For Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You see? First, he comes to steal what you have. And to kill the spirit of God in you. So that he might be able to destroy you. So he is not talking about devil here. He did not talk about devil. No. He's talking about fake teachers. He said they will come. They are pretending. But they will not talk to you. You see them begin to bring, put big, big offering on the altar. They begin to fast. If you say let's do two days fasting. They will do three days fasting. Warming up to become a leader one day. Then you see their physical faithfulness. Not seeing their spiritual disobedience. Physically they will be faithful. But spiritually they are disobedient. They are disobedient vessels. Physically they are faithful to you. But spiritually they are never obedient. How do you know them? When they are on their own, you begin to hear them. You begin to see what they are saying. They begin to warm up on how to, how to excuse you out of your own chances. Why? Do you know why? Obodiah 117. How do you know them? They will tell you, yes, sir, but they are not functioning. With what they agreed with you. There's a spirit that is not dead in them. Why? Obodiah is not what confirmed in them. They will tell you yes sir. They will go afar and mock you with that yes sir. 
Then when they are coming back, they come with a different result from what you are expecting from them. Why? Because a true deliverance is not yet made. There's a spirit in them. It's inside of them. That spirit is inside of them. But looking for a height. Looking for a height. It's just like, okay, let me bring it this way. Let me bring it this way. Do you know that an America, uh, what do you call them? Is this CID you call them? They can come to Nigeria and spend many years with you, joking with you, playing with you, not knowing that they are just out to what to kind of do some surveillance. They want to sub survey the whole area to know the plan of the country, to know the strength of the country, to know everything. They can spend 50 years trying to discover whom you are. American expatriates. I don't know their name, but I'm just trying. You understand what I'm saying now. They, they call them spies. They come, they trade with you, they dance with you, they eat with you, they play with you, but stay. They will never compromise their faith concerning their mission. Likewise, the China, the Chinese. The Chinese will come and spend many years with you. They will never compromise their faith. They, 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 sorry, their, their, their mission. They have a mission just to study. They are, on a, they, they are out to, to, to do some surveillance, to know what you are up to, what is your capacity, what is your length, what is your, your breadth. They want to know where is your hiding place in the case there is a war. Where are your treasures? What are that? What are those things that you are 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 you are, you are looking onto? What can they collapse to bring you down? That is what they are looking for. And that is how these men are in the church also. They follow you. They trace you. They follow you. They trace you. Why they have their mission? Why? Because they are not delivered. Obodiah 1, 17. Because they are not delivered, that spirit will not react. Because the spirit wants to operate when you have a better position. Whenever you are promoted, the devil is happy. The devil is rejoicing because he sees an instrument that he will use on a good height. Hey, I want you to understand this thing today. Whenever you are promoted, when you are not delivered, and you are promoted in a church, the devil celebrates. He knows that he has his element in you that he will use to collapse the church. He will use to collapse the vision. Likewise to marriage. When the man is not delivered, when the wife is not delivered, watch. There's a level they get to. You see them begin to react. The ugly one inside will appear. You say, "Ha! Ah, but my wife was so, he was so, he was so faithful. Who said there was a spirit who needed a position? That spirit will not react until there's a better position. When he has discovered that he has children, all of them are graduates, he will begin to think on how. The spirit will come up now to silence the man that all the children will look unto her. We look unto him. The spirit is everywhere. It's in the business center. You see somebody, you and somebody, you have a deal. Oh man, let, okay, you bring one million, we'll bring one million so that we invest it. At the very beginning, you all, we are laughing, we are smiling. But the moment the, 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 the investment is a good harvest, one will begin to kill one. Why? Because there's a spirit that is inside. That was the same spirit when Lucifer knew that he had gotten a good position. He said, if only I can drop God for me to take his place. I want you to understand this. It's a spirit. That is why the scripture says, upon Mount Zion, you begin to see the Mount Zion, what he's saying now. Let us drop every kind of spirit or else it will react us when we get to a better position. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting what I'm saying now? You see somebody, he will humbly come to you and say, Oh, I don't have so. Let me squat with you. I, I, I just want to squat with you. I just want to squat with you. 
please just consider me. Uh, see, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm ham, harmless. I'm this. I'm homeless. I'm harmless. I don't, I don't hurt people. Let me squat with you. L okay, let me begin to sell uh, uh, fruit while you are selling drinks. Before you know it, how you were pushed outside that place, you will not know. Why? They don't bring that spirit. The spirit will not speak until you have a ground. That spirit, that evil spirit will not speak until you have a ground. So that is why you see so many pastors today, so many, they will say, hey, what, 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 what is there? What is deliverance? Why? Because they know if deliverance come, holiness will be revealed. What is deliverance? It is not the, sorry, sorry, what is holiness? It's not the life you live. It is the kind of spirit that you possess. That is holiness. Not the life you live, but the spirit you possess. When you're talking about holiness. So, if you are not holy, you will rebel. That is, no, you like it or not. A man that is not holy will rebel God. It will only take time. It is only by holiness you become faithful unto God. Faithfulness is born from holiness. Faithfulness is born from holiness. Faithfulness is born from holiness. A man that is not holy, it takes time. It will definitely rebel. It's just a matter of time. That is what Obadiah 170 is talking about. If you ask all over the world, you are hearing me. If there's something you still don't understand, you can call and ask. I believe the Holy Spirit will be able to open it for us. A man that is not holy, I repeat it today, that is not holy, We definitely rebel his master. It will only take time. It will only take time. And you will begin to see the trace. With little, little disobedience. To let you know, I am there, oh, I'm coming. Oh. It is not the man that is doing it. The spirit in that man. That he has not what let go. He will begin to give sign that I am still here. I'm preparing for war. Just what I need now is that I want to gain a stable ground. When I enter, I will fight. Imagine. Lucifer. How close he was to God. Imagine Lucifer. How close he was to God. Imagine Lot. How close he was to Abraham. I want you to begin to see them. But I want you to see somebody who is far different from these persons that I'm, I've mentioned now. David to Saul. David was holy. David was purified. David was built, was prepared by God. Even while Saul wanted to kill him, David was still faithful still. Why? Because he was delivered. When you are not holy, you must rebel. It is only a holy man that can stand and become faithful. Jesus never lifted up his head one day and said, no. Why, why serve God? Just face me. No. Holy. I want you to see it. Look at Samuel and Saul. Samuel was made to offer sacrifice. But because of the spirit in Saul, he came up and said, let me do it myself. Not until you are holy, you will rebel. Fight. The only thing you fight for. Don't pray, Father, don't help me. I don't want to rebel. No, it's not a prayer point. Father, deliver me from an ungodly spirit. Deliver me from a strange spirit. On my own, I wouldn't want to rebel my master. But I see a spirit in me that will one day make me rebel. Ha. There is a truth we need to know. There's something we need to understand.
Why? Because they are everywhere. They are everywhere. John says something. He said for the, for the coming of the Antichrist. He said, but now there are many Antichrists everywhere. For the coming of Antichrist. But there are many Antichrists everywhere. There's a major one coming, but there are some. His agents are already everywhere. The agents of Antichrist are already everywhere. Who are to introduce the major one? The Messiah is coming, but John the Baptist must be around. <laughs> the Messiah is coming. The Redeemer is coming, but John the Baptist must be around. So there are people who are designed to introduce, to bring in the Antichrist. They are preparing their way right now. They are putting everything in order. But I know one thing. The Bible makes us to understand that when you see that this thing has come, the moment the one world religion comes in, you know that Christ is close. It's a, it's, a, it's a sign. It's a sign. It's a sign that Christ is already coming. So the faster they are, tell the speed of his coming. Don't be afraid. <clears throat> the faster and how rapid is the wickedness of this earth. It's a sign of the speed of the coming of Jesus. If you watch, in the 80s, sins was not like this. But if you watch this 2000, look at the speed of wickedness. The speed is too much. You will know that Christ is on his way, on a riding horse. Brugu, brugu. He's coming right now. I love one thing. Adi B is coming like a lamb again, one will still doubt him. But he said, I came, you doubted me. He said, but this time I'm coming, and when I come, you will not have room to doubt. Because I am no longer coming like a lamb. I'm coming as what? A lion, a king. A victorious king, not a, see, not a war king. No, he's not coming to fight. No, he's coming as a victorious king. Because if he, see, when he came before, he came to fight, but you didn't know. He fought and fought and entered hell and waged war with the priest of hell. And all his body was stained with blood and everything. And he came back with injuries and bruises. When Thomas doubted him and said, Hey, I know my God, I know my Jesus. My Jesus was wounded in the hand and in his feet and in the side. He said, Okay, yes, it's true. I came for war and these are my bruises. Thomas, look at my palm. Is there no hole here? I mean, again, don't expect anybody will lay hand on me anymore. I'm coming with a ritual. So it is the things of the spirit that builds our faith, that build our faith. The things of this world cannot build your faith. Don't think because money has entered your hand, your faith is alive. No! Even the hidden can't money. Don't think because you are able to buy a car, oh, you have faith. That is not faith. Faith is made to please God. Faith is made to please God. We have two ways of reward. Either God reward you or the devil reward you. So having a car is a reward, but I don't know where the car is coming from. So you should judge your inheritance. You need to judge your inheritance. Hallelujah. Let me just read this place for you before we, we go. Revelation 2. God was talking to this man. I want you to see that we can't we can hide from him. I, I was telling somebody, I said, you think God didn't know that Adam was hiding 
And God was now saying, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? So God did not see Adam, eh? God was looking for Adam. No, it was night, so God was not having a touch so that he can touch where Adam was. Or the battery went low. I think. Adam, where are you? Who said that God did not see him? If God qualify him, he will have enough excuse to say, oh God, you did not permit me to say something. So God wants you to say it the way you want it. Because if God say it, you say, no, that is what I wanted to say. I think I have, I, I have a friend like that. Whenever I'm talking to him, say, exactly, that is what I wanted to say. So, so we have people like that. Exactly, that is what I wanted to say. So God said, let me not, let me not help you. Adam, where are you? Because if I say, Adam, are you hiding from me? Exactly, that is what I wanted to say. So the best thing, Adam, you say it now. Where are you? So not that God did not see Adam. He sees in the dark and in the day. He never slumbered or sleep. So he did not doze up before the event of Adam. He knew all that Adam did. He was not ignorant of Adam's sagas. I want you to know that. So let me just read. Now, because of time, Revelation 2 verse 4. He said, nevertheless, I have some words against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. Verse 5. He said, remember, therefore, from whence thou art falling. And repent and do the first work. Or else I will come unto thee. I love this. Unto thee. Quickly. And we remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. What am I trying to say is this. If you watch, there is a love you were having for God before. There was one passion. The love you have for God is different from the tongue you speak to God. You might be speaking tongue to God, but you don't love God. You might be praying 24 hours, still you don't love God. So prayer is not a, is not a, a proof of love. But obedience is the proof of love. Prayer is not a proof of love. Defense. It's good you know this. If you want to defend yourself, you go into prayers. Prayer is an act of defense. But obedience is the proof of love. For Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. I want you to know that. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. This is the truth. I want to read Living Bible so that you let us read Living Bible. Please don't mind me. This light is really reflecting my eyes. I, I can hardly get some things so just bear with me. I think verse 4, let me read from verse 4 to 5. He said, Yes, there is one thing wrong. You didn't love me as at first. I come again. Yes, there is one thing wrong. You didn't love me as at first. Think about this time of your first love. How different now. And turn back to me again. And walk as you did before. Or else I will come and remove your candlestick from his place. Among the what? Church. You see it? 
You first love me. But guess what? It's like your love is waxing cold. It's, it's no longer the way you used to love me. He said, but you better revive yourself now or else I will take away your candlestick. Now, let's come back to the scriptures. What is candlestick? What is the stick that the scripture was talking about? For God said in his word, uh, sorry, the, 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 the word of God says, the spirit of a man is the candlestick of the Lord. Remember, the spirit of a man is the candlestick of the Lord. Now, he says, if you are not faithful to me, if you don't love me the way you used to love me, I will come and take away your spirit. That doesn't mean you will die physically. I want you to know that. It doesn't actually mean you will die physically. But I will be separated from you. Just like it happened in the days of King Nebuchadnezzar. What happened? Because of his way, what happened? God took his spirit away from him. He became a beast. A man without the spirit of God is equal to an animal. So King Nebuchadnezzar became an animal for seven good years. A king became an animal for seven good years. Having long fingers. Hair all over his body. Living on grass. Taking tents in caves and all. A king, he was taking tents in caves and all. Imagine that. Why? Because the spirit of God left him. That is why David said, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me that joy of your salvation and renew your spirit within me. You see, your spirit is your candlestick. So, once God takes the spirit away, you become useless on earth. You become a mere existing person. A mere existing soul. That is why all the time, you need to refresh yourself with God. By what? Loving Him. And how do you love God? By obeying Him. Obedient is love. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Meaning, keep my instruction. So, obedience is what guarantees your love with God. Obedience is what guarantees your love with God. I want you to see something. There are two different things here. But what guarantees the love of God to you? Chastisement. For who God love is chastised. But who love God obey God. I don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If God love you, he chastises you. And he instructs you. But if you love God, you obey him. That's all. To whom I love, I chastise. But if ye love me, keep my commandments. Simple. Hallelujah. To, I repeat it again. To whom I love, I chastise. Another word, to whom I love, I rebuke. To whom I love, I correct. To whom I love, I instruct. To whom I love, I control. To whom I love, I, I lead and I direct. The Bible says, he shall direct your path. The Bible says, in the book of, I think, book of Proverbs, it says, and he shall direct your path. You see it? But if you love him, keep his commandment. Because of the love David was having for God, what did he say? He said, oh Lord, show me your precepts. Show me your statutes. Show me your way. Show me your law that I might not digress from it. Show me your commandment. Because David loved God. He wanted to know what God wants from him. That he might do it as an express of his love to God. 
So I want you to know this. So if we say we love God, how come of a sudden what the Bible speaks against? That is what we are pursuing as a mission. That means you are among them who crept in. You are among them who warmed yourself in. And was silent for many years until you gained a position. Why? Because you did not agree with the deliverance of Budaya 1 17. My people all over the world, I just want you, the time is come. Have time with your Bible. And no matter what we preach, even while we are true with our messages, you try to get the message of God from our message. Search the Bible again. Like me, I have not given you the best. The best comes from the Holy Spirit. The best is from the Holy Spirit. Let us learn to listen to the Holy Spirit to direct us. He knows what is right. The Holy Spirit is the Father's heart. There's something you don't know about the Holy Spirit. That is the heart of God. If you don't know it, you better know it today. The Holy Spirit is the Father's heart. So when he said, David is a man after my heart, he simply means a man after my spirit. So the question is, are you a man after God's spirit? Check your ways. Who controls your decisions? Is it the Holy Spirit? Who controls your decisions? Is it the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is the heart of God. If you don't know it, you better know it. The Holy Spirit is the Father's heart. He said, and David is a man after my spirit. Hey! Are we, I, I, I want to ask myself, come, are you a man after God's spirit? I want to be Lord. I want to be a man after your spirit, Lord. Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Meaning, anything about Jesus, I'm contented. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hey, hey. Baba, how, how do I do this? When will I live to that level of pleasing you, living like you, Baba? I, I just, I, I want, I want to, I, oh God, I don't know how to say. It. must come that we let earthly things go. Spend more time with God. For very soon, we also will make the same statement, just like Solomon did. Vanity upon vanity equals to vanity. Very soon, the same word will come out of us. When Jesus said, I did not say, David never made mistakes. But it was not enough for David to allow, the, see, to allow God to lose his interest concerning him. When you are in the heart of God, you become the interest of God. When you are in the spirit of God, when, you, when the spirit of God gains attention on you, you become the interest of God. God can't do without you. Because it is only those who are in the spirit of God that have the mission of God. For you to function in the mission of God, you must be in the spirit of God. The mission of God is for them who are led by God. Another word, by his spirit. Are you a man after God's heart? That I should consider you one who will represent him on it. If you are not in his heart, you can't.
can represent him. If you are not in his heart, you are among those who warm themselves in, who crept in, who sneak in. Ah. I know sometimes you say, who are those ones that jump through the window? Sometimes we say, no, no, no. He's talking about if you are not, see, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if your Christianity is without a genuine repentance, you are jumping through the windows. To find God. Your Christianity must become a genuine repentance so that you don't cross through the window. Are you a man after God's heart? Are your ways right with God? Check. Ask yourself. I don't want you to believe in me. Believe in God. That is what the scripture says. For I cannot give you what it takes to become like God. But God can do and can give you what it takes to become like God, like him. That was what he said in the scripture we read. The coming of Jesus is, is so speedily. So he's, he's coming so speedily. The speed is too much, the coming of Jesus. Especially now, the speed is too much. But am I trying to adjust the speed? No, I like the speed. But I'm talking about we who are not ready to yield. To get ourselves prepared for the coming. To get ourselves ready for the coming. Because if you are not a man after his spirit, you are not one who is qualified to reign in his kingdom. This is the truth. I beg you, Live each day at his, as if it's the last day. Yesterday has gone. Tomorrow might not come. Live each day as if it's your last day. Yesterday has gone. Tomorrow might not come. Don't always say, I will do it. Don't procrastinate your faith. You better do it now. If there's any change you want to do, you want to give yourself, change now. Tomorrow might be too late. I'm begging you all. Live each day as if it's your last day. Live each day as if that is the day Jesus is coming. Let every day be the coming of Christ in your life. You will do well. Let every day be the coming of Christ in your life. You will do well. You will do absolutely well. When every day becomes your preparation, knowing that Christ might come today, and you are living to that level, I tell you, you there's a guarantee, there's an assurance that yes, when he comes, nothing will separate you from him. I beg you the name of our Lord, Yehushua Amasha. I cry from my heart to tell you, Fix yourself in the heart of God. Fix yourself. David did it. Even despite the mistake that David did, he was still fixing himself in the heart of God. And he said, Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. You see? Where is the presence of God? The heart of God is the presence of God, which is the spirit of God. You don't see God to know his presence. Nobody has seen God to know where he lives. But David knew that the spirit of God is the presence of God. He said, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy. Hey, I love that place. You don't know the meaning of joy. Let me tell you the meaning of joy. Restore unto me the assurance of your salvation. That is the meaning of joy assurance, joy. When you don't have an assurance of a thing, you can never be happy. Restore unto me. The word joy is assurance. Hey, God. My spirit is, 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 is crying. Restore unto me the assurance of your salvation. I renew your spirit within me. That's what Jesus said. 
Restore unto me the assurance of your salvation. That is the meaning of joy. The assurance of salvation. You see? He said, restore unto me. Because I'm not sure of the salvation. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm doubting now because of my wrong ways. Because of my wicked ways. Because of my tough ways. Because of my bloody hands. I'm not sure of my salvation. But Baba, assure me this. Just assure me. If you tell me that I'm still qualified, I have no problem with my faith. I'm okay. That was what David was talking about. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Spirit away from me. The joy of your salvation. God. Church of God. No matter the beating. No matter the crushing. If Jesus did not deny his faith, you don't deny your faith. No matter the hunger. No matter the betraying. No matter who betray you. No matter who you get confidence on. And it turn you down. No matter who you get confidence on and it turn you down. No matter the pain that you are going through. No matter the, the debt you are into. I know you are homeless, but you are not godless. You must understand that. That you are homeless. Is... You are homeless never means that you are graceless. I want you to understand something. The day has come that we decide no matter what it takes, Jesus is our Lord and personal Savior. I like it or not. My faith, I'm subject to my faith. My faith says Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. So peace cannot decline me from my what? From the report of my faith. Peace cannot decline me, cannot reduce me from the report of my faith and from the height of my faith. I want to remind you again, remember what David said. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the assurance of salvation. I'll continue from here next Saturday. I just want you to hook up on Saturday. Where we fire ourselves up and get encouraged concerning the reality of future. You are blessed. More grace. I pray for you, viewers all over the world. As you are watching, as you are seeing, looking at everything that I've been saying, you are hearing me and you are looking right now, searching the scriptures yourself, I see the glory and the fullness of God overtaking you. I see the mighty hand of God resting in your report, resting in your, in your case, resting in your issues, resting in your race, resting in your pursuits, in the mighty name of our Lord, Yehushua Amasha. I recovenate you into the fellowship of our Father, God. I see God by himself visit you this night and have a good discussion with you concerning the future. You can never be ruptured out of your future. Why? Because God... It's in the business of picking you up, placing you where he has promised to place you. Not where you want to go. Because where you want to go, might be, you may not understand it, but where God wants you to go, where comfort is assured. I put you there today. And I see people begin to see reasons why they must favor you this point in time. And I submit your face in the heart of your benefactors. I submit your faith in the heart of your helpers. I want your faith 